Hi lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be talking to you about some romance books that have sports involved in some way in them. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna be talking about some sports romances. This is actually also a collab video. Tori from Novel Life and I are posting about sports romances today. So after you finish watching my video, go check out hers or if you've already watched hers, hello. I love Tori so, so much. Oh, I love her. And um, she reached out to me to do a collab video. So we chose sports romances and I'm really excited because I've never made a sports romance recommendation video on my channel before, so these might be new to y'all, but maybe not. <laughs> sports romances, I think I'm very picky about because I used to be a sports person myself. I was heavily into sports growing up. Um, I was a swimmer, I was a soccer player. What was the other one I did? Softball. <laughs> um, and so sports, I grew up with those. And so I'm very particular and picky with them. So these are the ones I think like are the cream of the crop amazing. One of the characters in the couple in these books is a part of a sport in some way. So there's some books in this list where like the sport is kind of like mentioned but it's not heavily prevalent. I don't know how to describe it. Like the sports romance part in here, the sports part in here is not necessarily the main part of the book next to the romance part if that makes sense. I know that might be very confusing. I'll just get into the recommendations. <laughs> First, I want to talk about a Jennifer L. Armanchat book. Um, she writes under the pen name J. Lynn sometimes, or she used to. Um, so this one is called Fire in You, and this is the last book in the Wait for You series. And this, I think, is my favorite of the series because it's just so good. This is kind of like a teenage crush to lovers. It's also an age gap and kind of forbidden, okay? So this is about Jillian. Years ago, her childhood crush, Brock, the Beast, who's an MMA fighter who works at her dad's martial arts company place. Her dad basically has Brock as kind of like his right-hand man, kind of. He kind of like rejects her and it breaks her heart. And so it's years later, Jillian is back in her father's company. She has gotten a job at her father's company and she has put her whole past with Brock behind her. And she thinks that she'll probably never see him again because Brock isn't really involved with them anymore. But then, Brock is back in her life. He's back in the martial arts company. They're forced to confront what happened to them many years ago. And Brock is starting to realize that Jillian is way more than this teenage girl who had a crush on him a couple years ago. But obviously it's very forbidden because her dad is the boss, you know? If you want to read a fighter romance, an MMA fighter romance, I feel like this one is a really good one to start out with. Um, you don't need to read these books in order at all. It's like number six in the series. However, like you do see them like as side characters very briefly in one of the previous books. I don't remember which one. So like you can read this book on its own. These books aren't heavily interconnected, but I love this one and not a lot of people have read it. So I'm recommending it to you. <laughs> Next, we have a fan favorite. We have The Year We Fell Down by Serena Bowen. Um, this one has incredible disability representation in here. This is a college romance as well. So this is about Corey and Hartley, I'm pretty sure, right? Yes, Corey and Hartley. They are both living in the handicapped dorm on their college campus because Corey has been in a accident recently and she is, um, not able to walk anymore and so she is wheelchair bound and then one of her dorm neighbors is Hartley and he is in a cast I believe because he got in a hockey accident both of them are hockey players however Corey is very distraught about the fact that she will probably never be able to play ho hockey again and yeah it's the romance between the two of them there is great amazing banter between the two characters and um, if you love a good college romance, this is it for you. I'm kind of like diving away a little bit from college romances just because like, I don't know, they're not my vibe anymore. The main reason why I love this one is because of the disability representation in here. Like I haven't read the rest of the series because college romances aren't really my vibe anymore. I really love the disability rep in here and just to talk about hockey, I love hockey romances. I know a lot of y'all do too. So I feel like, I think every single book in the series centers around hockey. And um, I'm gonna talk about another Serena Bowen book involving hockey later on in this video. So yes, I really recommend this one if you love college romances as well as hockey romances. Next is a very popular author um, and a book that people are very hit or miss for. So we have Fixer Up by Tessa Bailey. A lot of people love this book or they hate this book. <laughs> I loved it at the time. I adored this at the time that I read it. I don't know how I would feel about it now. At the time I did give it five stars. So this is about Georgie and Travis. Travis is a very prevalent and popular baseball player. However, he got an injury recently and 
he's very depressed and thinks that his life, life's work and life's goal is utterly crushed because he has this injury and thinks he can't ever play baseball anymore. Um, and so he goes back to his hometown where Georgie lives. Travis's best friend is Georgie's brother. And Georgie is very much the baby of the family and her family doesn't really take Georgie seriously. Long story short, by some means, you read about in the book, the two of them get in a fake dating relationship to better the other person. You read about why Georgie needs a boyfriend and why Travis needs a girlfriend and everything like that when you read the book. But I really like this one. <laughs> I'm a big sucker for baseball romances because I know the sport very well. Um, and so I really liked this one. I liked the fake dating aspect. I liked the forbiddenness to it. I loved the, the talk in here. I personally loved it. <laughs> I need to find more baseball romances. So if you love any baseball romances, leave them down below, please. Next, I have a whole entire series for you. And um, if you love sports romances, you already know about the Pucked series by Helena Hunting. This hockey romance series is so good. I loved it. Okay, I loved it. They're hilarious, steamy, fun, amazing books. The audiobooks in here are fire as well. So I don't know how many books are in this series, like six or seven, um, but each book is about a different member of this hockey team falling in love. <laughs> and so Pucked is about Violet and Alex. Violet's brother, stepbrother, is on this hockey team and um, she meets one of his teammates named Alex and they get in like this one night stand to more kind of relationship, but it's not one night because they keep coming back to each other. It's just hilarious and funny. I love the humor in here. It was amazing. I loved it. So each book in the series is about a different player on the hockey team that Alex is on and them finding the love of their life. There's also a little novella spruced here and there about babies and weddings and all that jazz. So I need to get this series for like my shelves because it's one of my favorite series ever and I don't have them physically. Next is a historical romance. We have Say Yes to the Marquess by Tessa Dare. This is another fighter romance. <laughs> so this is about Cleo and she's been waiting years to marry her fiance, Piers. It's been eight years and he has not come to marry her and she's sick of it. Okay, and so she goes to his brother um, named Rafe and is like, hey, your brother is never gonna marry me. He has not wanted to marry me in eight years. He's not going to probably. I'm cutting off this engagement right now. His brother's like, no, 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 no. It's okay, we're gonna set up the wedding. We're, it's gonna happen, we're gonna do it. And so he tries to convince Cleo to stay with his brother, even though he's been pining over this woman for years. And Rafe is very much known as being like the underground, um, ultimate fighter kind of. Um, it's kind of different because it's a historical romance, <laughs> but he tries to <laughs> prepare this wedding that Cleo does not want and they have to spend time together and there's a cute old dog in here. I just love this. I love this so much. And I really like the sports aspect in here in a historical because you don't really see that all that much. Next is another baseball romance. We have The Truth About Cowboys by Lisa Renee Jones. This is like one of the only cowboy romances that I like love. Um, so again, if you have cowboy romances that are hot and fun, leave them down below, please. So this book is about a heroine who I don't remember her name at the moment, um, but she decides she needs a break. And I believe she's writing a novel, if I'm not mistaken. And she decides to go to a ranch on Airbnb, finds a ranch to stay at um, in one of their like abandoned houses. And so on the way there, I think her car gets stuck in the mud when it's like flooding or something. And this really gruff, broody guy ends up helping her out of the mud. And she's like, wow, that guy was rude, but he helped me, whatever. And so then she goes to the ranch and the owner of the ranch's grandmother is the one that put the uh, cabin for rent or whatever on Airbnb. So she's staying there for a little bit. And little does she know that the guy that saved her from being stuck in the mud, her car being stuck in the mud, is the guy who owns the ranch. And he uh, used to be a very, very, very popular baseball player. Our hero left the career because of some family tragedy. Uh, so he hasn't really played since and he feels like he can never go back. Like he doesn't have the same drive and um, talent that he used to have. And so the heroine kind of like pushes him to be the man that he knows he can be. And oh, it was so good. I love the incorporation of baseball in here. I thought it was great. Next is another fighter romance. We have Neighborly by Katrina Jackson. Ooh, this one is so much fun. Calvin is very prevalent in the fighting sphere and Haven is kind of like his good luck charm. She goes to all of his matches and everything. They are furthering their relationship even more. They decide to move in together in this duplex. And next door to them is a married couple named Tasha and Steven. When Haven and Tasha see each other though, they're very attracted to one another. And so the husband and the 
boyfriend in this relationship, in these relationships, decide to let these women explore how they feel about each other. Uh, and so the four of them kind of like get together because of how these two women feel about each other. This is very good. <laughs> It's very hot. It's very fine. I loved the MMA part in here because it wasn't like a big prevalent part, but I loved the addition of it, if that makes sense. Like there's a few scenes in the fighting ring, um, but it's not like a big part of it because I'm not a fan of like celebrity romances all that much. I, I only know a few that I love and sometimes sports romances tips the line of celebrity for me. And so if the celebrity part in here is like too big, I don't really care for it. I find it very cringy. And so I just loved the um, incorporation of MMA fighting in here when it wasn't that prevalent, if that makes sense. You might be very confused by what I'm saying, but I loved how much MMA fighting was incorporated into this book. Next, we have Jock Row by Sarah Nye. This is another baseball romance. So this is about Scarlett. Love that name. That's my middle name. <laughs> um, Scarlett is going to a party with her friends on Jock Row. So it's kind of like the when you're when you think about college there's like a street of sorority and fraternity houses there's in this book jock row where it's a street of jocks living in houses together and so they go to this party in jock row they go to the baseball house and they're talking to these guys and these baseball guys are making up lies to impress scarlet's friends and like talking about how like they won the college championships and blah 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 and scarlet's like uh no you didn't i watched the game that's not true. And so she's like blocking these guys basically from getting with her friends. And these guys are having none of it. And so they call up, I think he's the team captain. They call up Rowdy and it's like, hey, you need to get this girl out of here. Like we're kicking her out of the house. Like she's blocking all of us. And so Rowdy takes Scarlett outside and won't let her come back in. And Scarlett tells him like, I'm not leaving my friends alone. Like I'm not ditching them. I'm just gonna sit on the porch until they're done. And so he's like, okay, well, I have to sit out here with you so you don't come in. So like, we know you don't come in. Okay, sorry, I got interrupted. I don't know where I left off. <laughs> um, but Rowdy and Scarlett end up sitting on the porch talking all night long. After that, every single weekend, they just want to sit on this porch together and talk all night instead of going to these parties. And so they do that. And it is so sweet. So yeah, baseball isn't like a big prevalent thing in here, but it, it it's like touched on kind of. There's no like baseball scenes or anything like that. But I just thought this was great. I love this one. I love like a good like get to know you before I like you romance. And that's what was in here. Okay, next is one that like I consider to be a sports romance, but other people may not. We have Nerdgasm by Kimberly Reese. So this is the romance between Addie and Theo. Theo is a TA for this college class and Addie just happens to be one of the students that is in the class that he's a TA for. And so the first moment that Addie sees Theo, she's like, hmm, I want him, <laughs> I want him. So she makes it her life mission to get this guy. He is an innocent, hero um <laughs> he also has a stutter and he stutters only when he's really nervous especially around women <laughs> and so it's just really cute and sweet and i love just the romance so much theo in here is a very big swimmer so swimming isn't like a prevalent point in this book but theo you see theo swim in the book every now and then i used to be a big swimmer and so i just love that aspect in here because you don't read a lot about swimmers in romance books so i just thought i would mention this book it's one of my favorite it was one of my favorites of last year so please check it out lastly i want to mention the brooklyn bruiser series by serena bowen i'm only going to talk about the first one which is called a rookie move. So this is the romance between Leo and Georgia and it's also a second chance romance. Leo and Georgia were boyfriend and girlfriend in high school um, but then Georgia gets sexually assaulted by another person and um, she feels like she's damaged goods to Theo and so she breaks up with him. It's years later she is now um, I think the social media manager or the um, marketing manager, I don't remember who, she's a part of this Brooklyn Bruisers hockey team. Her dad is the coach and she helps out the team and they get a new player and it is Theo. He's a rookie and it is their second chance romance now. And so hockey in here, I just love Serena Bowen's incorporation of hockey into her hockey romances because I think it's great. It's amazing. Like she does a great job with it. Again, I don't really like the celebrity celebrity part in here. And I thought that she deals with it very well in this book. Um, and in the rest of the series too, I've read up to book four. Each book is about uh, 
a different player in the team getting their romance. However, book four is about the owner of the hockey team and his romance. So not a hockey player, but hockey is incorporated into it. So I really like this one. I think Serena Bowen does a great job with her sports romances, especially hockey romances. So please check her out. Anyways, there you have it. Those are some sports romances for you. Um, If you want more recommendations, please go check out Tori's video. And in general, just go check out Tori because she's amazing and I love her. Um, but anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. Leave me any hockey related emoji down below um because we're talking about a bunch of hockey romances in here um but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all